अप टू नाउ वी हैव ऑब्जर्व वन थिंग दैट कोसेट्स नीड नॉट बी सो लेट मी कोसेट नीड नॉट बी सब ग्रुप सेकेंड थिंग वी हैव ऑब्जर्व दैट ए बिलोंग्स टू ए एच third thing we have observed that g is equal to union of ah a belongs to g or same thing we can write for right coset ha such that a belongs to g so this we have observed in observation number third then in observation number fourth we have a is in h if and only if ah is equal to h then we have observed that in observation number 5 just like here and this is also true for right coset also so we can also write it like this now observation number 5 is ah intersects in bh is not equal to 5 if and only if ए एच इज इक्वल टू बी एच विच इज इक्वल इन टू दिस थिंग एंड द सेम स्टेटमेंट वी कैन राइट फॉर राइट कोस इट ऑल्सो एच ए इंटरसेक्शन एच पी इज नॉट इक्वल टू फाइव इफ एंड ऑनली इफ एच ए इज इक्वल टू एच पी नो थिंक ओवर वन थिंग that this is the set g so you have a set g like this inside this set g there is a subset let me call it h h is a subset or subgroup in fact subgroup now when you make ah so as you can see that ah is equal to h if and only if a belongs to h so if i take a a outside this subset so suppose i take a, a here i take a, a here then h will have a and a is outside h so h will not be equal to h so if h is not equal to h like this ah is not equal to h then ah and h will have nothing in common so it means when we will make a coset ah then there will be nothing common in ah and h so this is the coset ah now suppose i take another element b which is not either in this or in this then bh will be disjoint from h by this observation because b does not belongs to h so bh is not equal to h and if bh is not equal to h then bh and h has nothing common now bh and ah are not equal because b is outside ah so it means that because they are not equal so there will nothing common so this is another coset bh similarly take another element c outside then what will happen it will be another coset another coset another coset and this process will go on is it clear so what does it mean this cosets are disjoint either they are equal or they are totally disjoint there is nothing common and as soon as we are go on taking as soon as we go on taking one element outside all these cosets we will get a new coset new coset and new coset and this process will go on it means that coset partition the set g coset will do a partition disjoint partition coset will do a disjoint partition of the set g now i would like to give an exercise 
for those who know equivalence relation and partition so those who don't know equivalence relation and partition they did not to do this exercise because i have done everything but those who know equivalence relation and partition so for those for those who know equivalence relation so this exercise is for those students who know what is equivalence relation and the exercise is define a relation let me call tilde on g such that a uh, relation on g s s for a b and g a is related to b if and only if a b inverse belongs to h where h is a subgroup of where h is a subgroup of g so h is a fixed subgroup and we have defined a relation on this so the exercise is that show that show that this is an equivalence relation also for a in g so if you have equivalence relation then there is an equivalence class so if you take one element in the set g then the equivalence class determined by a is nothing but the set of those elements which are related to a so if you will collect all those elements which are related to a then it will turns out to be the right coset determined right coset of h determined by a and this is a fact that equivalence relation always partition the set into the equivalence classes and equivalence classes are the cosets so it means the property which we have proved third fourth fifth that will be proved as soon as you prove that this is an equivalence relation and this is an equivalence class so for those know who for those who know the equivalence relation they need to do this exercise and they will get the same result as we have derived here otherwise those who don't know we have proved everything without the term equivalence relation we have proved everything which we need this exercise gives you the right coset for left coset you can define another relation and do the same thing for left coset so let me define another relation let me call this relation as what should i call let me call a relation let me write again tilde so write a relation like a is related to b if and only if a inverse b is equal to h and show that so you may call it one exercise you may call it exercise 2 i am writing it in short so i defined a relation like this show that this is an equivalence relation equivalence relation and for a in g the equivalence class determined by a is nothing but 
the left cosec of h. So we have proved for left cosec and right cosec both the things. Now one exercise will give you the right cosec, one exercise will give you the left cosec. Proof is same. Okay, so this is for those who know the equivalence relation. Those who don't know equivalence relation, they need not to bother because we have proved everything. Okay, so let us proceed and do the next observation, observation number 6. So let us come to the observation number 6. Observation number 6. Now again suppose H is a subgroup of a group G, take an element A in G, now define a map from now let us define a map f from h to h as f of a sorry f of h is equal to a h Now I want to say that this map is 1 1 so let me show that this map is 1 1 how suppose f of h1 is equal to f of h2 then what will happen is that by definition of this map a h1 is equal to a h2 but in group there is a cancellation law so we can cancel it left cancel a then we have h1 is equal to h2. So it simply means that this map is 1 1 map. Now on this by the definition of this map the image of h is h. So take any element of this set then how this element will look like any general element of this set will look like h. So take h in h then by the definition of map it is clear that f of h will be h. So this map is on to. So this map is 1 1 and on to. So f is bijective. So the conclusion is that f is bijection. So f is bijection. So f is a bijection. What does it mean? F if f is a bijection then the cardinality of both the sets are same. Further suppose order of h is a finite number then we can simply say that then because the, it is a finite set and there is a bijection so the number of element in both the sets are equal. So order of h is same thing as order of h and this is true for all a it means the order of all the cosets are equal and the same thing in place of left coset if you take right coset then the same thing you can do for right coset also. So let us come to our figure again this is our g this is our h and this is our cosets so a h and this is b h c h and so on there are several cosets. So if h is finite then whatever the number of elements are here the same number of elements are here the same number of elements are here the same number of elements are here. So it means it simply also means that in each of the cosets the number of elements are same. So the order of AH is also equal to the order of BH is also equal to the order of CH and these all are equal to the order of H. Okay. Now come to the next observation this is the observation number 6 now come to the observation number 7. So the observation number 
Now again, S is a subgroup of a group G and define a map F from the set of all left cosets of H in G to the set of all right cosets of H in G. So how this map is defined? So left coset AH, I am sending it to the right coset H A inverse. Now first thing is to think over that is it a map? So is it well defined? Why is it required to check well defined? Because there is a several way of writing a same, same coset and it seems that this map depends upon the representative. So suppose I have two representative of a coset. Suppose AH is equal to BH. Suppose AH and BH are the two ways of writing a same coset then their image should be same, their image should be same. So we want to show that f of a h which is actually h a inverse should be same as h b inverse which is f of b h and it is not clear that whether it will happen or not we have to show it. So this is something which we want to show because otherwise same element will have different images. If they are not equal then the same element will have different images. Now think over it. AH is equal to BH implies if we multiply both sides by B inverse then B inverse A H is equal to B inverse B H by associativity in place of this we can put the bracket here and we this will become identity so this is the coset H. This simply means that B inverse A belongs to H. Once B inverse A belongs to H then we can also write it as B inverse A is equal to H because we have proved it for right coset also A belongs to H if and only if AH is equal to H is equal to HA. So because this element belongs to H so we have H is equal to HA. So we can write it like this. So now we can multiply both sides from right hand side to A inverse. So it will give you B H B inverse A into A inverse and H A inverse. So it will look like this. So A inverse A inverse will give you identity. So this implies H B inverse is equal to H A inverse. So this is a well defined map. So this proves that this map is well defined. Now I will show that this map is 1 1 also. So let us show that this map is 1 1. 1 1. Suppose, so what will you do for 1 1? We will take two elements AH and suppose it is equal to F of BH. So we have to show that AH is equal to BH. So what is F of AH? f of a h is by definition h a inverse is equal to h b inverse. Is it the case? So if you see it here then h a inverse is equal to h b inverse. If you multiply both sides by a inverse If you multiply both sides by A, then what will happen? 
दिस विल बिकम एच ए इनवर्स ए इज इक्वल टू एच बी इनवर्स ए सो दिस इम्प्लाइज एच इज इक्वल टू एच बी इनवर्स ए सेम स्टेप एंड देन दिस सिंपली मीन्स दैट बी इनवर्स ए विल बिलोंग्स टू एच सेम स्टेप B inverse A belongs to H simply means that this implies B inverse A H is equal to H by this and now we can multiply both side by B so this implies A H is equal to pH and that's what we want to prove so this proves that this map is 1 1 also so 1 1 is nothing but the converse part of this and uh, simply if you agree then you can put arrow here and this will implies this and this will implies this so otherwise this is this has been done suppose i take two elements both are equal then this will happen 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 and then ah is equal to bh so it this map is 1 1 now i want to show that it is also on to so let me write on to here on to so how will you show on to so you will take a right coset take A H A in the set of all right cosets of H. Then clearly, is there any pre-image of this coset? So if I take an element of this form A inverse H, then where it will go? It will go to H A inverse inverse, and A inverse inverse is A. So this is H A. So this implies that this map is also onto. So this map is. a bijection map so if number of left coset is finite then number of right coset will also be finite and their numbers will be same so what is the conclusion in this observation we have seen that the number of left cosets and the number of right cosets are in one to one correspondence means if this set is finite then this set is also finite and their orders are same so if a group has 10 left coset then that group also has 10 right cosets okay now come to the next observation observation number 8 Now come to the observation number eight. So let me remove it. observation number 8 suppose g is a finite group group and h is a subgroup of the group g now g is a finite group so everything is finite now h is a subgroup so either you start with left coset or right coset what will happen is that this is the g these cosets will partition the whole set g into different pieces and because g is a finite so what will we do let me do it again okay i have this set as g i take a subgroup h if i take a element outside this subgroup let me call it a 
and if we will make a coset AH then this coset AH will be totally different from this coset because A is outside this H. So and A will be inside AH and A is not in H. So AH will not be equal to H. So AH and H will be disjoint. So this is a new coset AH. Now if I take another element B which is outside both the sets. So this will give you a new coset BH. And this observation C says that B will be covered by the cosets. So the whole B will be covered by coset. Cosets are disjoint. And the number of element in each of the cosets are same. Number of elements in each of the cosets are same. So what does it mean? So suppose so one coset will always be H that is the coset by identity. So suppose A1H which is equal to H A2H and let me go on ANH are all the disjoint cosets of when I am saying cosets mean left cosets disjoint left cosets of H in G these are all the cosets because G is a finite so the number of element in G is finite the H's will be finite so the number of cosets will also be finite so what will happen is that if you want to count the number of element in G then what we have to do we have to count the number of elements in each of these cosets so and because they are disjoint so we have simply to sum them so A1H plus A2H plus up to ANH so how many elements are here how many elements are here how many elements are here and so on let me count all these elements and we will get the whole elements so as per their description let me take A1 A2 and so on so this is our A1 this is our A2 and this is A3 and so on and this is suppose our ANH so in this way it will get partition okay but one thing we have proved that if H is a finite then the number of elements in each of the cosets will be same and that will be equal to the order of H so let me write order of H plus order of H plus order of H how many times n times n times so it means the order of G can be written as n times order of H and what is this n actually where this n is the number of elements in the left cosets of H this is actually the cardinality of this set of left coset the same thing which we have done for left cosets in place of left coset we can do it for the right cosets also same result will come and because the number of element in left cosets and right cosets are same so the same n will come this result is called Lagrange's theorem so let me write Lagrange's theorem So let me write it here. If order of G is finite and H is a subgroup, H is a subgroup of G, then order of H divides order of G. 
then order of h divides order of g this is clear from here order of h times something is order of g so order of h divides order of g 